Axel's log supplemental. I realized in the last video that I may have shortchanged you on some of the repair work that was performed. So hopefully it'll be a little more clear as to what's going on and also to provide some insight as to what repairs are easier to do than others when working with the pot joint style axles. Now what I have in front of me is a complete pot joint assembly from inner diff to wheel. Now what's inside these pot joints here, and I've removed this for ease of description and uh, demonstration, but what's inside here is essentially a, a ball and cage assembly, so a CV joint, and you can see this is the end that goes inside the transmission. On the green car, I found that the axle seal itself was leaking, and in order to change that, actually it was on the right hand side, in order to change the seal, you have to withdraw the joint and then remove the cover plate and knock out the seal. Now, you also end up using a new gasket when you put it all back together. And I always use sealant on the gaskets to make sure they, they stay dry and clean. Um, but when you get this out, you'll have to inspect the surface very carefully. And you see how this has grooving right there. Um, this one's pretty good. I would certainly buff this on a, a, a buffing wheel and then put a new seal on it. But sometimes they can get severe grooves along here to the point where a new seal will simply just roll over and, and leak. So um, always inspect the, the seal surface, make sure that you don't have that issue because if you put a new seal on and there's a groove in here, the chances of it leaking are pretty high. Also, in the side cover itself, when you pull the side cover off, there's a bearing that this rides in and provides a certain amount of clearance. Now, over time that bearing will wear out and the joint itself will just wobble in the in the bearing. So there is a replaceable bearing in here. And you see it's a split type, so you can knock it out and knock in a new one. Um, the one downside of replacing this bearing is that it does need to be reamed to size. So this is the reamer. I just keep the protective protective goo on it. There we go. Um, this is the reamer that you need to use to ream this bushing to the correct size so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the, the new pot joint. So if you, they do sell new covers with new bushings in them already and if you think you have a worn one that might just be the easier way to go but if you've got machining tools and equipment you can certainly uh, ream out the new, the new bushing. So um, I don't do it very often, but when I do, it makes a big difference because if if the pot joint wobbles too much, a new seal is never going to solve the problem. So always inspect this this bearing surface. And on that green car in particular, the the joint was good. This was not too worn out, so it was just the rubber seal had failed. And I typically find the right hand side of the uh, pot joint assembly to be the one that fails more often than the left hand side. I suspect it's because of exhaust heat, because the exhaust runs right in front of this and it might just get everything too hot for those seals and just kill them prematurely. So that's one one reason why I had to do, do that seal. Now I also noticed that the inner boot was torn and I went ahead and replaced it while I was doing, um, doing the seal replacement. Now this axle assembly, here are the splines, this is the spline end. And of course, there is a circlip that goes in here. And this can be extremely difficult to remove or extremely easy, depending on how lucky you feel. But uh, when I try to get these apart, the goal of getting these apart is um, don't damage the circlip. And if the circlip is sitting like this on the axle, gravity will naturally have it hanging downwards. So you end up fighting against the top half of the clip which doesn't compress whereas if it's sitting upright in this orientation with the clip opening is at the bottom like so then when you slide the joint across it it only needs to compress the sides sides now when it's all together you don't know the orientation obviously it's it's hidden inside the cavity but try your best to just tap on it um, to try to get it apart now I use a metal punch. This is a 316 size, I believe. And you'll notice there's a this part of the ring. You can just get the punch on here and just tap evenly across until the joint releases. 
Um, sometimes you can try and spray a little, uh, you know, penetrating oil into here to get it to release, but typically it's just tap, 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 and away it comes. Um, if it doesn't want to come apart, then your only other option is to remove this band. Now this is a factory band still on here, which is a continuous piece that's just pressed in place. You'll have to cut this with a pair of snips or, or a Dremel or something to get the band off. And then you can pull the whole assembly out of the inner joint. So once you've done that, then what you'll have is the boot hanging on this end, and then you'll have the joint hanging here. And you can use a hammer to just whack it with this supported in a vise and just knock the axle out of the joint that way. But I typically am uh, pretty lucky getting these apart using just a punch and a hammer. Um, sometimes they can be really stuck, so just be aware that if it's not coming apart easily, then you might have to take the whole axle out. But um, yeah, if you need to fix just an inner boot, then that is what you could do. Now you still have to take you'll still have to take the whole hob assembly off. And let me take you over to the uh, the race car here and, and demonstrate what needs to happen for that situation. So we're out here at the race car, and I figured I'd just show you the process of dealing with getting the hub off. Thankfully, this car doesn't have a nose, otherwise I'd be sitting on the front headlights. So, like I said earlier, you typically have to take the hub off to do any axle work. And you'll end up taking upper ball joint apart, as in just take the nut off. You'll have to separate the joint using a ball joint separator. Lower ball joint nut, same thing, separate with a uh, splitter tool. The uh, brake caliper needs to be removed and probably hung on the inner fender or wherever you find convenient, but once you've got this off, the ball joint split and the steering arm back there removed from the hub, the whole hub assembly can be pulled off of the axle after you've taken off the hub nut and split pin. So hub nut and split pin, upper lower ball joint, inner tie rod end, and brake caliper. Once all that has been disconnected or removed, then this assembly will just slide off of the axle and then from there you'll be able to pull all this out. So just a quick just a quick overview of how to get it apart. I'm not saying it's fun or easy, but that's how it comes apart. By the way, if you're going to build a race car, make sure you do up the lock tabs. All the lock tabs on this car were left loose on the ball joints. Terrible. So, like I said over there on the race car, take the hub nut off, upper or lower ball joints, slide the hub assembly off with the brake disc or you know caliper and all that stuff hanging off the side, but pull that end off, and then you can pull this out of the diff. Now, imagine this is the diff here. You can slide this out, do your work on the axle, um, seal, cover plate, etc. But, let's just say you have a torn boot, and you don't feel like doing an oil change just to fix this one boot, you can do what I just described earlier, which is to knock the joint off with this in position, and then you'll be able to withdraw the boot, or replace the boot, and then slip the axle back into place. You still have to take all the hub assembly off, but at least you don't have to drain the oil out to do a, a simple boot on the inside. Now, if you've torn, say, an outer joint, well, you're really out of luck because you, you pretty much need to take uh, the hub assembly off to get access to the inner inner pot joint here and then um, this is held together again with the the boot so if you undo the boot clamps or cut them you can simply slide this off and leave the pot joint and the this you know the CV the bearings in the cage will just be hanging off the end of this um, at which point then you need to knock the joint off in order to replace the outer boot so the outer boot is kind of a pain to deal with um, if, if you happen to be in a situation where you're holding the axles in your hands, that would be a good time to change these boots because it's just easier to do it on the bench. But um, if you're dealing with just a, a torn inner one, then you can go ahead and change this without having to disturb um, the axle. Like, you don't have to take it out of the car. You just simply just disconnect the inner joint here. And then reassembly is pretty easy. I always put a little bit of grease on the splines before I slip it in place and just knock it in with a, with a mallet. And um, you'll be pretty obvious. So there's a there's a locating notch here. Uh, the joint just slides up and then rests against this. So if you don't see that inner ring resting against here, you haven't seated it all the way. But once you've done that, it's not coming apart, at least not easily anyway. 
Now, for several years, I used to just use a pry bar to separate the pot joint from the casing. I used to get in here with the pry bar and just pop them loose, but that's a really crude way of doing it. It leaves a lot of tool marks on the case, and it's just not a very professional way to do it. It's also frustrating when it doesn't want to come apart. So I went ahead and purchased one of these uh, pot joint splitting tools, and you can see I've, I've had to beat on this thing pretty heavily. Um, these tabs eventually get bent, but uh, this is a great piece of kit to have if you have to do axle work. Uh, it just slips right into the aluminum casing, and it sits against the face just like this. So that when you're hitting against the uh, the tab on the bottom, you're applying all of your load against the face of the the joint, and this this just rests against the bolts of the, the case. So um, provides very good leverage and just doesn't doesn't cause any damage. So if you have to do any of this work, I highly recommend getting this. Even if you have to do it once, I think this tool is worth having, even for just a one-off repair. Uh, the amount of time and energy and frustration that this saves. Is, is well worth the, the price of whatever this costs. So I think that's all I have for this supplemental episode. If it helped you, let me know. Like I said, I didn't, when I first started out, I didn't realize you could change them these boots um, in the car. I just assumed you have to pull the whole axle assembly apart and to get to this, but um, this is a serviceable thing with the axles in the car. Um, I also didn't know about the bearing when I first started doing mini stuff and so I used to change these out and these joints would be really tight and it was always a battle trying to get it back together so um, if that helped let me know and uh, if you thought this was an interesting little supplement let me know in the comments below and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in another episode of either tuning or parts repair or something interesting <laughs>